what does matter is that if you encounter somebody who is of the impression that acupuncture is not real or it's all in the head, then you can point them to this research and go, well, actually, no, it's in the ASIC3, the NAV17, the NAV1A, the ERC12, COX2 pathways, but at which point they're going glazed and you go, yes, it is real. Greetings and welcome to anti-inflammatory effects of acupuncture. Well, the physiology, for some people, it's the physiology that makes it real for them. And that's particularly the case I've found with a lot of medical practitioners. So there's no point telling them about systematic reviews showing acupuncture was superior to blood. They're not interested because for them, it's just not real. And no matter what you say, they will find a way that it's, it's just not real. But if you give them the physiology and particularly, even for most GPs, you can lose them in physiology in 30 seconds because they, they don't actually have that depth. And, and so uh, there's still people that haven't caught up with the fact that the histamine response is not the histamine response. The histamine response is the trip V1 response. But most doctors that have graduated more than five years, they don't know that because they didn't read that paper. And that the variability between individuals uh, is shown in the confidence intervals. And that's one of the things that's really interesting here. Not only did the substance P itself reduce, but the variability reduced massively from that to that in the course of the first treatment, just the first treatment and stayed very tight. And then as the substance P started to go up, the variability started to increase again. And what I'm pointing out here is that what pharmacy can do, acupuncture is already shown to do as well. Okay, so now we've got all the bits. So how is this relevant to acupuncture research? Well, it's very relevant 